In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have reached the fourth of our hot topics, and you'll remember that the first hot topic had to do with addiction and sin, right? That we all have this, these temptations in our lives. The second one had to do with marriage. The hot topic led us to understanding of how important it is that we have marriage and how important marriage and, the, and or the monastic life is for our spiritual journey. The third hot topic had everything to do with identity and what it is that we were created to be and how, how it is that God created us to love him. And today we're going to hit with a topic about heaven. Today, the hot topic is do non-Orthodox people go to heaven? But in order to talk about that, we need to understand what heaven is. So give me some help. What is the kingdom of heaven? Paradise, where God lives. That's right. What else can you tell me about the kingdom of heaven? How do we get to be with God in the kingdom of heaven? If you're good and not bad, that's an answer. It's not the full answer. There's actually three parts to how do we get to the kingdom of heaven. I'll come back to you. Okay, so follow Christ, right? So the, that's the, the first one is we have to have a relationship with him. We have to know him. He has to know us. What's number two? Baptism is a huge part of it. I would say actually baptism is the beginning of that relationship. So the first one is that we need to have a relationship with him. The second one is that just knowing that he is God and he is good doesn't make our soul ready. We have to also repent, right? So the soul has been called a temple. We have to clean up the temple so that once we know God, we can then invite God into our heart. And then the third one, this was my favorite answer at our vacation church school over the summer. How do we get to heaven? We have to die. Someone said that, and I said, well, technically... That's a part of the process, right? Because heaven is not this earth. Heaven is a place that our soul goes after this life, right? Now, death is actually a very important part of this whole conversation. Because when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they could have stayed there forever. And it was a real physical place. But because humankind sinned, because we betrayed God... He had to come back and save us. And we know that he did that through the crucifixion. He died for us. And then the resurrection, he overcame death, right? So death no longer has eternal control over us. So, through the resurrection, we can get to heaven. It's like death becomes a door. Right? And today's a very symbolic day for doors. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. But who is the door into the kingdom of heaven? Jesus Christ. Okay? Now that's important for us when we're understanding what heaven is. It's important for us to recognize that heaven is all about Jesus Christ. And that heaven is with Jesus. We get to heaven through Jesus. We have to have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our lives in order to go to the kingdom of heaven. So the church's teaching on the kingdom of heaven is that it is with God, that we are with God after this life, okay? Now I wanna tell you a story, and you've heard it before, but I wanna say it again because it's very important. So I once was on a hike with a monk, and we were walking through these beautiful mountains on Mount Athos. And as I was looking at the beauty and creation, we were talking about different theological things. And he said, Father, how do you explain heaven and hell to the kids in your church? And I said, well, sometimes we talk about it like heaven is like the beach and God is like the sun. And if you're prepared to go to the beach, the sun can be a really beautiful thing. It can make you warm. There's lots of vitamin D. You can get tan. But if you are not prepared for the sun, you can get burned. And if you get sunburned, it can be a miserable experience. So I explained that heaven is kind of like going to the beach, that we need to be prepared to be in God's presence. 
And he said, let me help you explain it even better. He said, God is light, right? I said, yes. He said, God is light in both a physical sense, the saints see the uncreated light of God. He's light in a spiritual sense that when he, when we're close to him, we see our own sinfulness even more. He said, our job in this world is to get as close to God as we can so that we know how sinful we are. Because when we die and we go and we're present with him, we're going to know everything about everything. Not only am I going to know how sinful I am, but we're going to know how sinful each other is. Everything will be laid bare, as it says in Holy Scripture. Everything will be exposed. And one of two things is going to happen. Either we will know our sinfulness because we will have repented. And when we see it, when we see our sinfulness, we're going to say, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. But you promised to save me. Your mercy and your grace have been given to me. And I want to be with you, so please forgive me. Or we're never going to have seen any of our sins... We're going to get to the kingdom of heaven, proud and ready to go in. We're going to see all of the things, all the things that we've done that are just broken and wrong and how undeserving we are of heaven, because no one's really deserving of heaven. And we're going to get scared. Our ego is going to take over. We're going to say, I can't be seen like this. And we're going to run from the light. He said, that's the definition of hell, not wanting to be in God's presence because we're too embarrassed to own our sinfulness. So the kingdom of heaven is very much a process of getting to know our own relationship with Christ through repentance, okay? So Jesus is the way. Now, it's kind of a trick question when I say, can non-Orthodox go to heaven? Because there's really two kinds of non-Orthodox, right? There's non-Orthodox who believe in Jesus, and there's non-Orthodox who don't believe in Jesus. So one of the answers I got earlier was, to go to heaven, you have to be good, right? And the world would say that that is exactly right. But it, le it leaves out one important thing. Can you tell me what that one important thing is? If we're just good, who does it leave out of the equation? God, right? Heaven is about God. It's not about good. We have to drop that O and realize that heaven is about being with God. So being good is called humanism. So it's a form, of, a form of religion. You could call it religion. It's a form of belief that you don't need God in order to get to heaven. And as Orthodox, we say that is not true, that heaven is all about Jesus Christ. So for those of our neighbors that don't have Jesus or they've rejected Jesus, we say that Heaven is with Jesus, so how can those two things be together? They can't. Now, how about our neighbors who do believe in Jesus, right? Can they go to heaven? And that's where the lesson comes in today, okay? So, so, so far we've talked about what does the church teach, and the church teaches us that it is through the orth or what does God teach us? It's through the Orthodox Church, which he gave us at Pentecost. It's through this church that we find our way to the kingdom of heaven, right? The church and all the dogma and all the things that we do out of faith, that's not what gets us to heaven. Our relationship with Jesus gets us to heaven. But the church is like the road map, right? It's literally what I mean when I say the kingly road, Vasiliki Odos. It's the, the high road, the right road. It's the road that we know goes there because we have 2,000 years worth of tradition and saints and examples and experience to teach us that. However... Who gets to decide who goes to heaven? Jesus, not us, not the church. Jesus is the judge. Our Lord is the one that will ultimately decide whose conscience, whose soul has accepted him and welcomed him. So it's really not for us to say whether Christians outside of the Orthodox Church go to heaven. We can't make that judgment. We can say that the Orthodox Church is the right way, the Orthodox Church is the fullness, the Orthodox Church is absolutely the path, it is the faith. But we're gonna be very careful about judging the outside world because what happens when you judge others? Judge not, that you not be judged, right? We don't wanna come into judgment because we're not blameless either. So how about this scenario? This is my favorite. I used to ask this question as a kid. What if you grew up 
on a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where you'd never heard of Jesus. Could you, though, how could you go to heaven? What do you guys think? You have an answer? Dimitri, what do you think? That's right. He, God's not going to punish us if we've never heard of him. What else? Right. You have never heard of Christ, so how can you have rejected him, right? And I will say that every single human being, whether they're born into a Christian faith or not, knows what it means to be a Christian in their heart. We were made in the image and likeness of God. So in that rare circumstance where people have not heard God's message, then we rely on our conscience. And that's what I want to close today's homily with. How important our conscience is in our spiritual life. Because it is our conscience that either accepts Christ or rejects Christ. But on a daily basis, we're making decisions every single day that affect our spiritual life. Okay? So our conscience should always do one thing. It should always point us back inside when we judge. We should never be judging outside. We should always be judging inside and saying, Lord, I'm the sinner. Please lead me to your kingdom. Lord, help me to love my neighbor, right? So then let's go on to, what if my neighbor is not orthodox? How do I love them? What do we do? Talk about who? Jesus, right? We need to bring our neighbor to Christ. We need to bring our neighbor to an understanding of how important the church in a relationship with Jesus Christ is in our spiritual life. And then we focus on ourself, okay? And a big part of that focus is receiving the sacraments because the sacraments and the church are that door. Christ is waiting for us in Holy Communion to make that bond, right? I told you I was going to end with a story of today's gospel. Today we read about the widow of Nain. She was a woman who lost her son, and Jesus encountered her at a gate, the gates of Jerusalem. And this is a very theologically symbolic thing, because when we encounter Christ, he is the gate. It's through Christ that we go to heaven, right? And this woman had lost everything. Not only was she a widow and lost her husband, but she had also lost her son. And in that time, if you didn't have a man to help you with things, like legal things or going to the supermarket, you were done. You had to rely on other people's generosity. You basically became a beggar. And so Jesus redeems her life by giving her son back to her. And he does the same thing for us when we come to the gate, when we come to the church and all the places that we can encounter him. So that's our, our homily for today. And next week, we're going to talk about um, heaven 2.0, right? How does this earth, which was supposed to be heaven, and science, how does science and the church, science and evolution, work in our orthodox understanding? But for now, let's receive communion, so please stand. Put on our cross together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, please forgive me.